Welcome back. Well, anyway, so this is Pat McFadden, the Right Honourable Pat McFadden. Now he's, he's an MP. He in the current, he is in the current government, but he was in the government back in two thousand and six and so on. In the oh, it's so confusing. All that they keep changing the name of the department where he is, basically. But um, anyway, he, he, you'll see that it says, it says Sam Steen. He, uh, you ask him a you know fairly straightforward question is well you've got all the, the postmasters that are, are saying they've been abused and so on by the post office why didn't you ask the postmasters what they've got to say for themselves that is that is he, he just waffle waffles on and he does give this politician's answer um uh, he, politicians when they're asked a question that they only they've only got certain ways of of answering it and you'll see he just comes out with the same thing twice and then the third time, and then he said, he just, he just gives up the will to leave it, poor boy. And he just, he just went, oh, well, I'll ask it three times. That's, that's, that's enough. <laughs> but um, he doesn't give me any confidence, I have to say, the fact that these people, and it's not just him, in their in, in the current government, they, they just don't ask any questions. Or they, they did ask the questions, and they just told us, just, oh, well, I'll accept it. Well, Lord Arbuthnot didn't, did he? Because the... He, 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 he didn't accept what the post office was saying um, and thank goodness for people like him anyway I do hope you enjoy it consequences that people are turning to false accounting or being forced to file for bankruptcy now that's my summary of, of a particular part of what's being sent through to government okay now th these are these are unusual allegations these are particularly strong allegations with sub postmasters in branches being made to pay back or being prosecuted or turning to criminal acts is are wholly unusual do you agree uh, it is unusual yes yeah. uh, the, the large number of people that I represent I suppose want to find out then what happened next and, and again in my summary what happened next was your office went to back to the post office who the sub postmasters regarded as the abuser of them went back to the post office and said what's going on and you got a reply from the chief executive of the post office saying uh, well um, not, no problem here um, this is not happening uh, how do we how do we in the future when you're thinking about changes to the way that these matters should be looked at how do we actually get the government to actually think about what people are saying, not just organisations? Because what could have happened here was that someone could have spoken to the sub-postmasters rather than just going back to the post office. Why, why did nobody do that? Well, look, for us in taking this allegation at the time, uh, the right thing to do was to ask the people running the business, and we've talked... Sorry, I, I had to cut it, because he does waffle on a bit. I, I know I do go on a bit too, but anyway, if you do like this sort of thing, please subscribe and do put a comment as to what you think. Thank you. At that point, you, as we said, I said in my exchanges with Mr Stevens, ministers at that point will usually think, I can't intervene in court judgments, and they think that for a very good reason. Well, I, I, you've already been asked questions by the chair of this inquiry about that part of it, and uh, I'll, I'll leave that alone. But my point, and the question I'm asking you, is this. You're saying that the right thing to do is to ask Mr Cook, this is what your private office did, Mr Cook at the post office. You're saying that's the right thing to do. Why isn't the right thing to do to ask the people that are saying they are being abused by the post office? Well, Why miss out on them? Well... The National Federation of Sub-Postmasters, as is seen in evidence given by the then General Secretary to a select committee some years later, he says that at the time he didn't think there was a fundamental problem with the system either. So at the time, the representatives, or what I thought, was the representative of the sub-postmasters. They weren't raising it as an issue either. Now, what I have subsequently discovered, which I did not realise at the time, was that the relationship 
between the National Federation of Sub-Postmasters and many individual sub-postmasters, I think particularly perhaps those involved in this scandal, was a bad relationship, but that wasn't something that was clear to me at the time. So you have both the management of the business and, in effect, the trade union saying very similar things. Mr McFadden, I know that you've been a politician for a very long time. That wasn't my question. My question was, in relation to this correspondence, the trenchant and uh, deeply disturbing allegations being made by Computer Weekly were not investigated by your department. They were simply circulated back to Mr Cook. As an example, if your answer was right, nobody within your department said, well, let's have a word with the NFSP. What happened at the time is you just go back to Mr Cook rather than the people making these awful complaints. Have you got a better answer than, well, I'm not sure why it didn't happen, but we could have, if later on, thought about it, we had, might have had a natter with the NFSP, which didn't happen? I think it was the right thing to do to try to get the raise these concerns with the post office who were running. Sorry to put that again. Um, I did like that when that Sam Steve but came in with a oh well I might have sub postmasters but, but, but. <laughs> anyway I'll, I'll leave you to this last this last little bit. So I've asked that question I think three times. Uh, I'll stop now. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Is Miss Watt there?